Now, as wonderful as the CPU is, he can only do his job if he's able to communicate with the outside world. A discussion of buses, bus widths, and speeds is beyond the scope of this section, but we do need to understand that the CPU communicates to the outside world with primarily with real memory. Now, real memory is much more abundant memory, but far, far slower. It is the place where the CPU fetches most of its data and puts a lot of its data when he's finished executing these very tight instructions. So let's talk a little bit more about the different types of memory that we're likely to encounter. First off, there are two basic types of real memory. There's random access memory, and we'll discuss read-only memory in a few minutes. Random access memory has two basic types again, dynamic RAM and static RAM. First off, let's look at dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAM is cheaper. It uses capacitors. Now, if you have looked at or you understand very much about electronics, you know that a capacitor is an electronic component that will hold a charge for a finite period of time. But over time, that charge will degrade and it will eventually totally lose the charge. So if you have a capacitor and you charge it up to a positive voltage value and it represents, let's say, a 1, at some point, the voltage is going to drop to the point that it no longer represents a 1, and it represents maybe a 1, maybe a 0, but it's hard to tell. And then over a longer period of time, it represents a 0, so it loses the value. That's why we have to dynamically refresh and send another volt charge out to the capacitor and recharge that capacitor up so it'll hold the charge. Since we have to dynamically make sure that this particular type of RAM is recharged, it is slower. But capacitors are very cheap. If we want the very fast type of RAM, we go with static RAM. Static RAM uses a flip-flop circuit. A flip-flop circuit is a specific type of electronic circuit that does not lose the charge. As long as there is electricity available through the machine, basically the machine is on, then the static RAM bit will maintain its value, the 0 or the 1. It's more expensive to create, and it's faster. So the engineers have a real problem here. They're trying to make systems as fast as possible and as cheap as possible. So what you'll run into in most common machines, most machines that you'll run into on servers and client platforms these days, is a mixture. There's some static RAM for the faster pieces, especially different levels of caching type of memory. And dynamic RAM is what we normally use in the chips that will pop into the memory expansion units and add more and more memory to a machine.